Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Sai Physiology Academy, Dope of a Shot. This is the place where we make the learning of physiology easy, exciting and effective. Thank you for joining me. And if you're new to this channel, you're especially welcome. And if you love the content that we share, kindly click the like button and also the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't get to miss any new content that we drop. Now let's get started. So now we're going to be dealing with the other type of exciting tissues okay which is a muscle and we're starting with the skeletal muscle which is like the gold standard of under really understanding how a muscle reacts when it receives an action potential and it's a question that examiners like to ask how excitation which is receiving electrical impulse how it is converted into contraction they usually ask something like briefly discuss excitation contraction coupling okay so but first you know one of the principles of physiology is that structure determines function so for you to understand the mechanism okay another way to ask that question is explain the mechanism of skeletal muscle contraction but to understand the mechanism how something functions you must first understand the structure okay so that's what we're going to be dissecting today the structural components of a skeletal muscle okay for example you have this biceps here like this well-known muscle now that muscle this biceps now is known as the whole muscle the one that attaches to a bone okay so let me let me draw it here something like this okay so this is the bone this is the tendon that attaches to the muscle then this is now the whole muscle now within that muscle you now have smaller components okay smaller units within it so the whole muscle is covered by epimysium connective tissue then these smaller units they are separated from each other by what is known as perimysium okay then within these smaller units you now have an other smaller units inside them okay smaller units inside them that are separated by what is known as endomysium you need to understand it so this one is a very epimysium okay so why you have the whole muscle this ones here that are separated by perimysium is known as the fascicle okay fascicle fascicle then this now contains these smaller ones that are separated by endomysium they are known as muscle fiber do you understand that muscle fiber so this small one here like this is known as muscle fiber that muscle fiber is also known as the myocyte the muscle fiber is actually a muscle cell okay so when you have a myocyte myo muscle site cell so it's called also known as so don't get confused okay muscle fiber they all mean the same thing you hear myocyte muscle fiber muscle cell so these small things here separated by, by endomysium is known as the muscle fiber or the muscle cell now you have the muscle cell which is like every other cell it has nucleus and cell organ it's a very large elongated cell okay you can bring out one like this and we can still dissect it then within that muscle cell you have a cell organelle a rod-like cell organelle within this muscle fiber known as the myofibril okay 
myofibril myofibril so it's like inside a muscle cell you have a myofibril like an organelle okay so that myofibril is now made up of myofilaments muscle filaments which are actually proteins okay They're made up of filaments thick and thin filaments right so this myofibril is now broken down into thick and thin filaments right so these thick and thin filaments they are actually the basis of contraction that is where the contraction you can understand contraction from so you cannot understand contraction from this whole muscle you need to go down you see how we understand physiology from the cell cellular mechanisms you go deep into the cell to understand it so this is the cell muscle fiber in that cell you have an organ known as myofibril that has thick and thin filaments now look at what i've drawn here a skeletal muscle is known as a striated muscle that means it has dark and light bands the dark band which is represented by this all this is known as the a band okay why the light band is known as the i band okay these are physics terms they were gotten from physics terms in the sense that this a band is an isotropic an isotropic that's where they got this a from an isotropic to polarized light okay why this i band is isotropic isotropic to polarized light light that's what it means okay so just know that a band i band that's what it means now the a band is this thick filament do you understand that a band what really composed the a band mostly is the thick filament and what really composed most of the light band is the thin filament all right so now we are going to be breaking down the thick and the thin filament what are they made up of what kind of proteins because they are proteins proteins are the structural and functional molecules of the cell remember it's an underlying principle don't go anywhere after this break Right, you're welcome back. So now I want to go into the thick and thin filaments. Now, look at this diagram here. Not so perfect a diagram, but we can use it to understand certain things. Now, the thick and thin filaments, they are arranged in parallel. They are parallel to each other and they are arranged in repeating units continuously like that so each unit is known as a sarcomere okay it is represented like this from this myofibril this is a myofibril actually so from here to here is known as the sarcomere sarcomere okay so the sarcomere is known as the structural and functional unit of a skeletal muscle of contraction okay the sarcomere from here to here now it's from here to here repeating units like that now look at the thick and the thin filament so this dark line here is the thick filament okay why this one represented these red lines they are the thin filaments so what are they composed of they are proteins so let's write them down thick filament okay so the thick filament is made up of myosin number one myosin 
okay it's a contractile protein contractile protein and it has two components it has the head and it has a tail okay so myosin head and tail look at it here this one here the head and the tail then you also have the m line is part of the thick filament number two the m line or you can call it the m protein they're all proteins okay so this end line is a structural structural protein okay then three you have this green one here called titan number three titan okay titan is an elastic protein just like a spring so it's joined to this end here the end of the unit called the Z line. So from one Z line to another Z line is known as the sarcomere. Okay? So the titan is elastic. It's an elastic protein. So that is the thick filament, myosin M line titan. All right? So let's go to the thin filament. This red. You see how it is shaped. There are a lot of things in there. So the thin filament number one you have actin okay actin you've heard of actin actin is one of those cytoskeleton in the cell okay actin is also a contractile protein all right so let's put it here actin contractile So actin is a contractile protein. Then you have another type of protein known as tropomyosin. Tropomyosin. Then number three, you have troponin. Troponin. Okay. So troponin has three subunits. Three subunits troponin i troponin c and troponin t okay troponin i troponin c and troponin t when we are talking about the mechanism of muscle contraction we're going to be telling you the roles each of the, this subunit of troponin they play ict it's easy for you to remember troponin okay so this is the thin filament the thick filament like this and the Thin and thick filaments are the ones that will interact with each other during contraction, right? So this myosin head, this head here, it has binding sites for actin. You see how it's contacting, in contact with actin, with the thin filament. It has a binding site for actin and it has a binding site for ATP because the process of muscle contraction requires energy so it hydrolyzes ATP it binds ATP and hydrolyzes it to release energy for such contraction so this is the structural components of a cell very important that you understand we've broken it down from the whole muscle down to the smallest molecular level the proteins that make it up so when we want to talk about the mechanism of contraction it will no longer be difficult okay i'm going to be seeing how myosin and actin and all this troponin how they interact to lead to contraction that you see all right so i'm going to see you in the next video